So we just had hopefully our last appointment. We scheduled our induction for the 15th if it comes to that. But super exciting news because we've been going a little stir crazy which we'll have a little heart to heart with y'all later on about how everything's been affecting us just anticipating her weight. But they ended up doing, I guess to do the membrane sweep, they have to basically do a cervical check because your cervix has to be open to do that, which I didn't know all those details. So in a sense, it's a two in one. She hasn't done a cervix check this whole time. She's trying to prevent that as much as possible. But with like, we thought we had some fluid leaking and we wanted to just make sure on everything and see where she was at and with consistent contractions. Yeah, since I yesterday. was having contractions, I was like, let's just, Sure. Yeah, so her three hours ish of contractions yesterday possibly opened her up to the two centimeters dilated that she is today. Did the membrane sweep, said there could be some leakage and a little bit bloody or spotty, but not to be worried about it's normal. Oh, and she was 50% effaced, which is yeah. good. He said her head, which before he even like, a, I guess said her two centimeters or whatever dilation that she's 50% of face and that she's right on the cervix. She's like, yeah, her head's definitely right there. So and she did not like when he was doing that, which made it even more uncomfortable because she's like, oh, and he stuck his fingers in to do the check. And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> she's like, I'm not used to this. Yeah. So we did walk a lot yesterday. I think we might take a light walk today. He said, make sure that you definitely are resting and have enough for when this comes. He's like, you could be dilated for this for, you know, a while. Or he's like, you know, in the next 72 hours, if we don't see anything to be prepared, which hopefully you post this maybe tonight. Yeah, which he was basically saying that because if the membrane sweep doesn't work, which would put you into labor in the next one to three days, he's like, we can get another one if we want to, which my next appointment's in Monday. Five days. Five days, yeah. So we did an earlier one. We've had afternoon ones because I was on nights to be able to come to them. Which today I went in the lobby to be on the Wi-Fi because there's none in the parking garage to FaceTime. So it was nice. And I felt so, like even if people, I'd say partners, if y'all have been just not going because you're not allowed in, I would highly recommend that you at least do the FaceTime thing because it definitely makes you feel as there as you can be and helped my, I guess, separation from all this a lot better to be able to ask questions to the doctor and hear what was going on when they did the check so plus we had a really informative doctor so it was nice for her to be able to get in on that one whereas three weeks ago the lady that was like oh don't worry about it christina would not have enjoyed that very much <laughs> this is a side note any of y'all can comment below but i always prefer female doctors just because i'm uncomfortable with males period so I always prefer a female when it comes to that, but her aunt is a nurse, Aunt Jill, and she was saying that normally male doctors are a lot more gentle, which I always request female, so I wouldn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. But Lauren had a male the last two times, but this one actually had to do a cervical check, and she was like, that is a fact for her so far, that male a male has been more gentle because they don't have the parts than a female has, so Yeah, and I feel interesting. like stereotypically, one would think that like a female would be more able to answer your questions but i personally felt like they covered information the males covered information more thoroughly so i'm kind of glad that i had one last week because he was very informative and so is this one yeah so the game plan is, is we have to get we're gonna run into the bx here on base because it's more safe than most places ish supposedly um we're gonna grab some chocolates for her and yeah my aunt recommended it and bella some... if you're watching tell jill i'm taking her recommendations <laughs> and then some winged pads which we already have like the depends and bigger pad sickles that are in the fridge but i don't think we have a lot of extra like pads mm -hmm. period so we're gonna pick up a couple things i'm excited and uh, it's been driving us crazy but just to know that at least she's starting. I'm thinking the three hour contractions were what opened you up. So hopefully when contractions start, the doctor said hopefully when they start this next time, like they'll continue and won't pause. I'm really glad that like there's at least something going on down there. Cause if I would have had all those contractions yesterday and then he tell me like cervix is closed, I probably would have been very disheartened. <laughs> we're doing fingers crossed for not having to be induced or have any Pitocin and gonna try to rest but walk and stay moving and see if contractions come in the next day or so. Also, he was one of the first doctors that was like actually supportive of me saying no pain meds without being like, well, just wait and see. Cause he's like, well, what's your pain med me medication like preference? And I was like, I would like to do it pain free. And he's like, okay. He's like, yeah. And then he, he did cover some, you know, like things about the epidural about like how, if I do decide that I want it, that I need to kind of decide before eight because it might not set in if you're eight centimeters. 
and all this stuff but it felt like he wasn't trying to be like well you're a first time mom just wait and see so that yeah, he was, was really very nice. like you know whatever you want and then just was informative as far as what options are what is normally procedure like for what they would do yeah but. plus i asked him kind of like how the induction timeline works because i have been just positive visualization that she'll come on her own but i still want to know so well i'm even more excited i want to see if she has hair and what color her eyes are and feel her and i know i want oh and he said that she's most his guesstimate for her weight right now is around seven pounds so. yeah i'm off on that too i was like she's definitely eight something which she might be by the time she comes in a day or two but i i would say or if she weighs i, I would have if i would have guessed like if she if she did come like any time now i still would have guessed you would have been eight like mid eights yeah but i guess we'll see how accurate the doctor's squishiness of of the baby yeah he's like here show me this is what he was doing he's like with a lot more pressure he was like squishing this way and this way he's like my sorry he's like my guesstimates are more accurate than ultrasound so he was like squishing her and like, he's like i did say around seven pounds we shall see doctor if you are correct <laughs> yep. but we're gonna run inside and uh we'll talk to y'all soon all right bye Necessities. Get the back of mine. I, I always love this. We just got back from the appointment. We stopped at Panda Express and had like a mini car date and just ate in the car together. And then we went into the um, BX and got a few things, which we didn't actually go what we went in for, but Christina got the bangs, which were two for three, so she got six of those. <laughs> Um, we're gonna go to Target later, but I'm gonna lay down to rest for a little bit first because I'm feeling kind of like crampy and just very tired. So I'm gonna go lay down and then we'll be back with you in a little bit. We did get this cute little Itsy Ritzy Teether rattle from the BX. It was only $7 and most of the Itsy Ritzy stuff on Amazon is like 10 or more. So I thought it was super cute and I love like the neutral rainbow colors it has. Christina didn't eat all her panda. Leftover panda. And then we're going to Target. -o. Bah. <laughs> so we made it all the way to the Target, which was only like 10 minute drive, but Christina went in to get a few things and I like got super, I felt super sick in the car. So I told her, I was like, you need to come back. And I was like, so she had to come back out and give me the mask. I had to go into the bathroom and then come back out. And then my stomach was hurting so bad. So I felt really bad, but she had to drive us back home and drop me off. And now she just went back to get what she needed <laughs> which i feel bad because it was two things for me and one thing for her and she had two of the three things in her hand so i felt really bad she had to put it all down and come out but i was like i can't i was like i can't and i was like i need you to come out <sighs> i don't know if it was like the panda that we ate if i got like s some minor food poisoning or if it's just like from the membrane sweep in my body's like what's going on but I'm really glad she brought me back because I was still not feeling very good. I just felt really bad because she was in there and she had what she needed. I felt so bad. I'm like, I'm sorry. But she was super sweet about it. Yeah, that's the update for now. I just fed the dogs. I'm going to close Winnie in the kitchen so I don't have to worry about her having any accidents. And I think I'm just going to go lay back down in bed like I've been. Because I took a nap after we got back from my appointments. Oh, maybe I'll just sit on the couch. Maybe. I think that's fine. That was super fun. <laughs> My hero is back from Target. You told them how you had to take me home. What was my compliment? I said you were my hero because you had to come out and take me home and take care of me. I did it. I'm her hero. Thank my you. ears out my hand. You're welcome. I love you. I love you. Let's go snuggle and watch TV. Mmm. Don't tell me it was a good time. <laughs> She's also putting away my dishes, so I really I like to turn my laugh off. <laughs> It's the little things, you know. Uh, I'll show you guys what she got me. So, two things. She already took one upstairs, but she got me some always overnight pads. My aunt recommended them just because they're so long, so it'll save any underwear. Um, I, I had some pads, and I know the hospital gave me some, but to me, because we're not going to want to be leaving and getting germs when the baby's here. I'm just like, let's just get it now so we don't run out. And then the other thing my aunt recommended was to pick up my favorite chocolate. And then she said, when I'm at my wits end, I need to find somewhere dark and quiet, hide my chocolate there beforehand. 
And then when I need to go hide in there, she's like, even if it's only for three minutes, she's like, it has to be dark, it has to be quiet, and you have to eat two or three pieces of chocolate. So, so Lauren's gonna get in the bathtub and close the curtain and yeah. turn the lights out. <laughs> Cause all of our closets are pretty full, like we keep stuff on the floor. So um, I was like, I'm gonna keep it in the bathroom, turn the light out and then just get in You the should bathroom. have like a sign on the door so she like knows she can't come in and like I know I can't come in, that you like flip it and it's like red and it's like danger zone. It's like, don't, don't disturb your mother. I got the, she got me the dark chocolate doves. Those are my favorite and then also, if I get like tired of that, I guess um, we got a variety pack which has the, but this has milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and then milk chocolate and caramel. So, got a good variety pack. Thanks for the tips. Jill, you're really coming in clutch this video. Milk Ollie just sprinted outside. Having some cantaloupe. I'm gonna make some toast. We're kind of at the perfect time. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so we got this on boop, the contraction meter right now, about five minutes apart. I'm lasting for about 40 seconds. Uh, she's going to the bathroom now. She has to pee, but she said she wants to time them for a little bit. Like she likes to lay down once they start, which is the last time we had some consistent like this it is possibly when she was dilating to the two centimeters that they found today from a few days ago. We're gonna migrate to the other bed to charge and plug in everything and see if we can get to full minute contractions and see if they stay consistent. Cause the last time, like we told y'all, um, it lasted for about three hours and then it kind of cut off and they were like spacing out further and further as the time progressed. So we will update you. Maybe baby Fiesel's coming. Hey guys, I'm editing this video. Contractions of course went away um, as soon as I went to the bathroom. I know a lot of people say like get up and walk when you have contractions because it makes them like stronger or worse or you, I don't know. Anytime I've had contractions, it's when I'm laying down and then as soon as I get up and move around, I might have one or two more and then I can't feel them and then they're not there when I sit down again. So I don't know if it's just me, but I know they're different than Braxton Hicks because I have to like focus on breathing through them because they like are painful cramping whereas Braxton Hicks like my stomach gets really tight, but it's not uncomfortable. So I know they're contractions, so I know it's not nothing. But it's been so much like back and forth of like starting and stopping and yeah. So anyways, no baby yet. We will keep you guys updated in the next few videos. Um, yeah, waiting for baby girl's arrival. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.